Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to another Maestro Game Production. And before we get on with today's games, we need to look at our results since the last episode. Now, the observant of you may have noticed our league position above, so it's not going to be much of a surprise that things have been rather up and down. But there is one big surprise for everyone, and that is the team we will be facing in the Carabao Cup and our first game of today's episode. So without further ado, I shall scroll up and reveal all that information. So, we first of all played against Manchester United. That, of course, went according to the script. They beat us 3-1. Now, we had a good fight in that game, but I wasn't that pleased with the result and overall I just wanted us to play better so I mixed up our tactics tweaked our training because weirdly a lot of players who we'd positioned for instance David David is playing as a striker for us our coach had him training as a shallow striker so he's now training as an actual striker we've got certain players basically training what they need to be training so with that, we then went and played against West Bromwich Albion, and we picked up a 2-1 victory. Now, it was much closer than it should have been, but I will take a nice 2-1. Of course, we went and gave away a penalty, as did there. So, 2-1 in that one. We then played against Tottenham. Now, this was a good little game. They scored on the 21st, we scored on the 66th. Unfortunately, Harry Kane went and poked away a winner and robbed us of the point. So... Nice brave fight in that one. We then played Everton, of course, in the last game. And it went comfortable. Nice 4-1 win. David got on the score sheet. Gaetano did, and so did Musa. So everyone is now actually contributing up in that front line. So hopefully we shall have a bit of a turnaround in form coming into Manchester City and Huddersfield. Not got much hope for the Manchester City game, I must say. Probably got that mentally written off, but we'll see how that goes in the first game. But with the upcoming fixtures, I can see us beating Huddersfield. I can see us beating Birmingham. I don't know why I would say Burnley, but Birmingham. Don't know who we're going to get in Euro Cup. Arsenal's going to be a tricky one. Norwich is winnable, although they did finish very much mid-table. We then have the other Euro Cup. So with the Southampton West Ham... All the way down to the Liverpool Chelsea, there's only really Arsenal that I can see being a bit of a tricky fixture. But without further ado, let's head to Manchester City and play this Carabao Cup game. Okay, ladies and gents, we have finally made it here to Manchester. Of course, here at the Etihad Stadium. And we're at the top of the stand because I thought I would show you a little bit of the lads doing some training before the game starts. But I will see you fine folks when the game starts in just a second. Okay, ladies and gents, it is finally kickoff time here at the city of Manchester Stadium. Yes, you've guessed it, here in Manchester. And we are here for the Carabao Cup third round. Both sides are going with a 4-2-3-1. And our team for today's game is going to be Butland in goal. Zelikat left back, Katic and Pavlovic in central defence. We have Lorenzo on the right hand side of defence. Dragomir and Palacios in central midfield. Musa on the left. Mora on the right and Gaetano in central attacking mid. In front of them, of course, is David filling that role of Brewster. Now, as we know, probably not going to score 50 goals a season like Brewster almost did. But suitable replacement, I suppose, in the circumstance. Our bench consists of Pereira, Burke, Guimaraes, Navarro, Pearson, Mahi, and of course, I won. Yeet. So let's get into the locker room, see what Carlos thinks, and the team. Tell the team they are expected to pick up where they last left off. I mean, that's a little optimistic considering we're playing Manchester City here, and the last time we played against Everton. But still, um, passionately, I know a lot of you are, will be looking to avenge. Yeah, go out and express yourselves. As the song goes, express yourself. Do, 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 do. England... Carabao Cube and wow Watford already off to a flying start against Carlisle currently 1-0 
but we have at least held on for the first nine minutes. As you'll notice from the top, I am taking a more cautious approach with Manchester City. And we've blocked it, but the goalkeeper is too busy laying on the floor. Nice one, Butland. Nice one. You dive for the initial shot and then stay laying on the floor, as we'll see here. He dives for the shot and then just stays down. Nice open goal for the milkman to slot it in. So Milik is off to a flying start. Butland, not so much. He did the flying part. That is for sure. Didn't do much afterwards though. Musa tries a ball up to a new body. Osvaldo plays it up more. A nice interception. Gaetano to Palacios. Back to Gaetano. Gaetano gets past Foden. Gets it to Dragomir. Dragomir over to Musa. Musa on this left hand side does have Selic in support. So up to Dragomir. Dragomir will he play it? Selic no. Back to Palacios. Up to Musa to Dragomir. Dragomir coming down this left hand side does have support. Which one in Mora? Oh, unlucky Mora. That was lovely build up play. We are going to switch to a more balanced approach though, considering we are a goal down. Palacios holding it up, plays it back to Pavlovic. Pavlovic, nice ball back to Butland. Butland plays it up to Katic, and it's gone straight to Bernardo. Maybe pass it a little bit better than that, Butland. Don't want you completely throwing the game away. I know you've given them an early lead and put us in an awful predicament, but don't want you to completely give the game away. Blackpool is also off to quite a nice start in their game. Currently 2-0 up. I wasn't quite sure of who against. But we can always look at that in just a second. Same is running through our defence though. Bernardo forces a save and Milik this time forcing a second save. So they were against Shrewsbury. And other games. Kyle Isle has brought it back to 2-2. Barnsley is 1-1 against West Ham. And the other games remain goalless. So it is Manchester City 1, Hull City 0 at half time. They've had 15 shots, we've had 3. 10 on target, we've had 1. 2 fouls to our 6, 1 yellow card to our 2, 51% possession to our 49. Their best performer has been Milik with 1 goal and 7.2. But the more surprising one is our best performer. That was Butland. He's made 6 saves held and a 6.9 as a result. Which is weird, because he's the reason we conceded. Laying on the floor. But Aaron's was struggling for them, with a 6.6 .6 and a 0% crossing completion ratio. Struggling for us is Musa, made two mistakes and a 6.4 as a result. Blackpool extended their lead to 3 now, and Watford has managed to make it 4-2. That is quite the game. And West Ham won 1 against Barnsley. So Carlos thinks we should really sympathise with the boys after that. I mean, not really. Have you seen these ratings, Carlos? They're not doing the greatest. So I expect to see a much better showing in the second half. I don't care, Palacios, that you are demotivated. You better be anxious. This is a cup game. Palacios to Gaetano. Gaetano gets it to Palacios. Palacios kicks it straight at Sane and Sane is on the counter attack. This is not looking good. Sane coming down this right hand side gets inside and he's got a pass across to Milik who slots it away. I guess we go attacking. We're 2-0 down. We need to get the goals back and the only way we're going to do that is going attacking. So that is our approach. So what are we going to do here? What indeed? Who is struggling? Musa is having a really rough game. So you know what? Um, how do I sort this wing problem out? That's the question. Um, Mahi can go out there. Don't think. How are you playing it? Yeah, Gaetano's having a rough one as well. So, you know what? Gaetano, go off. We're going to do that. We're going to go pressing forward for I1 Yeet. And hopefully, that one works out. Because what currently is going on is definitely not 
working for us right now. Phil Foden though, running up through our defence like it's not even there. And it's on Manchester City in possession. Kovacic has plenty of room to shoot and Butland should have done a lot better with that one. Should have done a lot better indeed. I think it's very much a case of focusing on who to rest now for the Huddersfield game. Because Huddersfield is only a few days away. I believe it's a mid-week game. So probably best to just take our best players off at this point. We have got Gaetano who has come off. So at least that substitution doesn't feel wasted. And I won Yeet for Musa is also reasonable in that sense. Butland though, Butland gets it, plays it to Kartik. Kartik to Dragonier, back to Kartik. Kartik tries a ball over the top, gets it to David. David cuts through the defence. Come on, David, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, and it's a lovely save. Unfortunately, David can't get us on the score sheet here against Manchester City. But Dragomir with the corner, whips one in, back post, headed away by Milik. And Dragomir should collect this if he isn't too slow. He gets it, finally. And Silik gets it before the highlight ends. Now, let's get our third substitution off. I'm going to risk Lorenzo. Mora is looking very tired. So, you know what? Swap back to our normal formation. You go there, you go there. Swap you out, David onto the wing, and you can go there. You know what? Pearson, just drop back there. You can be our anchor man. Go anchor it. Because we definitely need something in defense. That is for sure. Select though in possession. Tries it up to I won eat. Best put my drink down. Looks like we might achieve something with this highlight surely. Pearson to Palacios. Plays it to, to, to Lorenzo. Pavlovic to David. David has Lorenzo on the overlap. Doesn't use him though. He has Mahi on the other side. And it's a lovely goal by Mahi. Lovely crossfield ball by Jonathan David to Mahi. And Mahi slots it away. If only we had that creativity for the rest of the game, then perhaps we might be in it. Unfortunately not today. Sané now in possession, plays it to Phil Foden. Phil Foden just walks through our player, literally, and gets it across field to Osvaldo. Osvaldo now just holding possession, wasting time for Manchester City, gets it to Rodrigo. Rodrigo to Foden now. Foden to Kovacic, Kovacic holds the ball up, plays it back to Rodrigo, to Osvaldo, back to Kovacic. Kovacic to a guy whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. And we have Rodrigo back in possession once more. Tries the ball across to Bellingham, Bellingham holds the ball up, which one across the field to Sane, it's blocked, and it falls to Kovacic. Kovacic, can he get another shot off, and he hits the side netting. Manchester City going for a scrappy one there. Come on, lads. A little bit more. Get a second. We won't feel so bad if we lose 3 2 against Man City. Heck, 3 1 isn't even too bad against Manchester City, I suppose. Especially considering the ways we conceded those early goals. We've very much brought this game back in the sense of being competitive. Never looked like winning it. Never looked like even getting a draw. But we've at least made it competitive in this second half. And not just rolled over and died. Although Dragomir looks very much like he's going to roll over and die with his conditioning right now. So it is Manchester City 3, Hull City 1. They've had 30 shots to our 6. 15 on target to our 3. 3 total fouls to our 14. 1 yellow card to our 2. 58% possession to our 42. Milik was their best performer with two goals and an 8.9 rating. Mahi for us was our best performer with a 7 rating and one goal. Struggling for them was the guy who I really didn't want to try pronouncing and it's time for me to attempt it. So Ivan Zinaho with a 6.8 and Musa with a 6.3.
we have a couple of milestones with Pearson making his 75th career appearance for us and Milik making his 25th for Manchester City. Player of the match of course goes to Milik. Carlos thinks we tell the boys they did well and their efforts were excellent. I don't think he was exactly watching the same game as me. So I'm not happy and the only person who has a problem with that is Palacios. So Palacios you can bite me. That is a personal message to Palacios. So, inbox. Manchester City coast past Hull. Sounds reasonable to me. Hull City defeated in the third round of the Carabao Cup. Hull City received 2.62 for being in the group stage, which we didn't have to do anything to achieve. So, let's quickly have a look at the club vision, because I feel like that might be us underperforming. Yes. They wanted the fourth round as a minimum, was marked as sort of a 50-50 preferred thing, but I think the board can get on board with the fact that we lost to Manchester City in the third round. I don't think they can be too angry with us losing in the third round to Manchester City. But I will head to Huddersfield and I will see you fine folks there in just a second. Okay, ladies and gents, it looks like before we head to Huddersfield to play Steven Gerrard, who is surprisingly now the manager of Huddersfield Town, we have the Euro Cup draw for the group stage. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So, first team out of the hat is Chelsea. Into Group A, we then have Valencia in Group B, followed by Atlanta. In Group C, D is Dynamo Kiev. We then have Marseille in Group E. Sporting in F. G is PSV. And A against in H. Now, it would be interesting if we do end up in H group, just based off one of our acquisitions in David. But I want to quickly have a little look at the seedings. So what order are we doing these in? There's six remaining seed one, seed two, there is quite a few. We are a third seed team, so we are kind of screwed in that sense, because every team is going to be a higher seed than us. So Bayern goes into Chelsea's group. We have Basil, not the brush, against Valencia. We have young boys in Atlanta's group. Celtic go in with Kiev. Standard Liège with Marseille, CSKA Sofia from Bulgaria with Sporting Lisbon, Bruges will join PSV, and we have Milan in Ghent's group. We then have Zoya in the group of Chelsea and Bayern, Dynamo goes in with Valencia and Basil Brush, and we have, wow, Michelin get into Atlanta and Young Boys group. We then have Copenhagen into Celtic and Kiev's group. Lie Liege? No. <laughs> Legia will go in with Standard Liege and Marseille. We then have Anders, not Scottish, even though it's SCO. They are, in fact, from France. They will be alongside Sporting and Sofia. Then we have Athletic Bilbao in Bruges and PSV's group and AEK with Ghent and Milan. So the last team into Group A will be LASK from Austria. Not sure what LASK actually stands for, but we have Rosenborg into Group B. Group C will be a Paul. We then only have us, Friedberg, Guimeres, Broadby and Trabzor, Trabzor even. We get Group D now. Out of all the groups, that is possibly the nicest group we could have got. Perhaps C might have been a little bit better, but I wouldn't argue with that group, I suppose. F doesn't seem too bad, as long as H with Milan seems a little rough. That A group definitely looks rough, and B definitely looks not a great place to be. But we shall be in Group D, so we have nice away trips to Denmark. We go back to Scotland once more and Ukraine. So a nice little selection there. So now that is dictated, what do our fixtures look like? 
Do we have our updated fixtures yet? No, we don't. So I shall just progress one more day so we can get our fixtures. So as you can see, we are ah, finals at Ibrox. That'll be interesting. Arsenal, the current holders of the Euro Cup. And it would be interesting if Celtic managed to get to the final. Unfortunately, there is no Rangers in this competition at the moment. Hull to face Dynamo Kiev. Fixture rearrangement, scout meeting. So we shall acknowledge the 24 year old, acknowledge the 19 year old, acknowledge the 24 year old, acknowledge you, because we can't scout any of them for some reason. Get analytics report, scout you, you're 22, we shall scout you. We shall acknowledge you, acknowledge you, acknowledge, acknowledge. We shall scout, acknowledge you're a bit old. Scout, we shall. 25, we'll scout you. 28, no, we're acknowledging. We shall scout you there. We shall scout you, even though it's not particularly great. Scout you, and you are going to be acknowledged. We don't want a 27 year old Iranian. He doesn't seem like he would be very much benefit to our squad. But before we head into this fixture against Huddersfield, let's have a little look at the games we have coming up. So we have Copenhagen. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I don't fancy showing us getting beat up by Arsenal. So Copenhagen and the game against Norwich will most likely be in the next episode. And then I'm not sure about Kiev. I may do Kiev with Southampton. I like to do the European away games just because we don't really get to see those teams. So it's nice to go away, have a nice little holiday to, in this case, it would be the Ukraine. But we'll figure that one out in a bit. For now, though, we have a game against Huddersfield. So I'll see you fine folks in Huddersfield in just a second. Okay, everyone, so welcome here to Odeon. Now, I'm actually just messing. We are, in fact, right next to the John Smith Stadium. So we shall head down this little road, obviously not going any quicker than 10 mile an hour. And we shall head just past here. As you can see, they've got a stadium health and fitness club attached to the supposedly fantastic stand. I... Probably won't go as far as saying that stand is fantastic. Doesn't look all that great to me, but who am I to judge the stand? So we shall head on around here. As you can see, this is the reception area of the stadium. And you've got the club logo just above here. Now, I did go quickly past it, but at the other side, there's also, of course, the Huddersfield Giants badge. And from here, you can get a nice free view of the game. So those who don't fancy paying, feel free to stand here and watch the game. If not, I will see you fine folks inside the stadium in just a second. Okay everyone, it is kickoff time here at the John Smith Stadium here in Huddersfield for our three o'clock Premier League game. And there's only one change to the starting lineup. Navarro is of course coming in for Dragomir. As you all remember from the previous game, Dragomir was getting a little bit tired towards the end. So he's going to be starting off on the bench. But otherwise we have an unchanged team. So without further ado, let's go talk to Carlos in the dressing room, shall we? So, dressing room, Carlos thinks, tell the team in no uncertain times, they must show an improvement from our last outing. Now, he seemed very keen on telling the lads that did okay against Manchester City, so I don't know where he's got this, they must do better approach. I guess he's been listening to me a little bit too much, but I'm glad to see it. So, I expect to see a much better performance from you today. That seems reasonable. It has gone down well. The only people who haven't really responded is Selic, Palacios, Navarro and Mora. The rest of the team have seemed motivated. So, Dennis Larson of Go Publication, the devious fellow who we have a great respect for. Both teams come into this one in a spell of poor form. Is this therefore a good opportunity to step up and arrest? arrest your recent struggles yes we're going to put handcuffs on our recent struggles it's a great opportunity to shake off our malice find our focus and turn our form around indeed 
let's turn this form around, shall we? Now, as you can see from this, I didn't realise there was houses or anything around. As we looked at the outside of the stadium, it looked very much in the middle of nowhere. So I'm not sure where these houses have sprouted up from, but apparently there's houses are going to the game near the John Smith Stadium. But we have Mora, Mora coming down this right hand side. Can he get a lovely cross in? Gets one across to Palacios. Palacios, what a screamer. Palacios, that was disgusting, my friend. Looks like it's going to VAR though. And David has gone and done something which he did in one of the games between episodes. Look, already going in and he's gone and ruined a perfectly good goal. So at least this time he didn't get a touch. Last time it was getting Callan straight in and he just pokes it with his tail whilst he's offside. And it was kind of pointless. But we are going positive. Now I've just noticed that I left it on the cautious approach. We don't need to go cautious against these. Surely not. At worst, maybe a balanced approach would have been a good idea. Considering we are, in fact, away from home. But we should be okay going with a positive mentality against Huddersfield. And we have David running this one down. Philip Schofield gets it upfield. Of course, I know it's not Philip. I would be rather amused if it was there. Valeria, Valeria plays it to Chong, back to Valeri. Valeri gets inside, but Selic, nice tackle, gets it away. Fiend, Fiend gets it to Dura. Duhana. Duhani? Yeah, Duhani. Chong's shot is pushed onto the post. Luckily, they do not have a follow up highlight. Now, let's swap that back to the Premier League. We want to see when Brighton is 1-0 up against Wolverhampton and Southampton is 1-0 up against Norwich away from home. All the other games, of course, 0-0 so far. We are going to demand a bit more because we don't want to be going in at half-time at 0-0. We need to get a goal. And Gaetano might be able to do that with this cross. Gets it in back post. Is that a push? Got to be a push. Charlie. Did Ronald McDonald push him? He did. It's a penalty and stepping up to take the penalty, I believe, is Gaetano, who took the free kick. Lovely goal by Gaetano. Of course, he is now our customary set-piece taker. Now, Bowen has gone. He's very much a corner kick taker, free kick taker, and penalty taker. So, Gaetano slotting it away. He'd be getting the nice gifts of the penalties. But it is Huddersfield nil, Hull City 1. They've had three shots, we've had 11. One on target, we've had five. Nine fouls, we've had two. Two yellow cards to our one. 52% possession to our 48. Their best performer was Fiend with a 6.8 and an 85% passing completion ratio. Our best performer has been Selic. 100% tackle completion ratio and a 6.9 as a result. Struggling to perform is Duhani who I've very much been struggling to say, with a 6.4 and he's had three mistakes, as Musa has had two mistakes for us and also has a 6.4 rating as a result. <clears throat> Other scores around the league, as I get a drink before my voice goes too croaky, Brighton and Hove Albion is 2-0 up against Wolverhampton Wanderers, Everton is 1-0 up against Fulham, we have Norwich pulling back and 1-1 against Southampton. Arsenal is 2-0 up away to Sheffield United. And West Bromwich Albion Bournemouth is currently 0-0. My apologies for that brief moment of me needing a drink. So we shall now head to the dressing room. Carlos, tell the team to do it for the fans. Again, Carlos, I don't know if you've realised this, but we are away from home. Now, of course, we will have a good travelling contingency, considering Huddersfield is not a whole massive distance away from Hull. But still, we're not going to do it for the fans, since they're primarily going to be Huddersfield fans. Um, so let's have a look at our rating. You know what? Things are going well, but you're capable of better. We've got the victory, but you can get three or four past these lads. Go do it.
we're going to demand a bit more and everyone is focused up apart from Mora who remains composed of course he doesn't like to be focused he'd rather just stay composed data aren't they though whips one in oh it's bobbling about and it's a goal come on David Jonathan David with his third goal of the season assisted by Luca Mora not sure if he quite meant for that to be an assist or if that was an attempt on goal but heads it down David flicks it into the net and we are 2-0 up complacent is Navarro though so perhaps I might bring on Dragomir after all Navarro has given the ball away to Chong and Chong is a very talented player who has made a nice through ball to Boateng luckily Butland gathers the ball and that is the end of that highlight. Hopefully. No, he's going to roll it out to Pavlovic. We are going to have a rather extended highlight. And after this, we shall make some substitutions. Because it is, of course, the 67th minute now. David heads it down to Luca Mora. Luca Mora plays it back to Palacios. Palacios, nice ball over top. David one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And he slots it away. Unfortunately, though, it looks like VAR is going to screw us over. That is unfortunate. So we shall just have a little look at how long this... Okay. We're not going to see how far away. There we go. We have an idea of how far offside he was. Eventually. So let's make some substitutions. Musa having a rough game. Mahi can come on for Musa. We can then go with... Wong for Mora, Mora swaps with you, and Dragomir can come on for Navarro. That be our triple substitution. We shall cross our fingers and our toes that nobody gets injured. Because otherwise we can't take them off the pitch. Luckily after this game we do have more than a week till our next fixture. I believe there is a bit of an international break and Mahi is going for a rather interesting finish. I must say. But Brighton is currently 2-0 at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Everton is 1-0 at Fulham. And Norwich is 2-1 now at Southampton. Well, against Southampton, at least. David, David collects the ball though. 88 minutes, it looks like we've got the victory here. Gives it away to Bakuna though. Bakuna gives it to Chong. Chong to Duhani. Duhani coming down this wing. Chong now trying to hit down this left hand side for Huddersfield but looks like Butland is going to get the better of him so David David coming down the right hand side for us now he does have help on the overlap if he needs goes alone though whips one in it falls to Mahi from the defensive header plays this Dragomir Dragomir oh we know what Dragomir can do from that position Last season, he scored several great goals from the edge of the area. Lorenzo, though, to Palacios. Plays it back to Lorenzo once more. Back to Palacios. Gaetano. Gaetano hugs it off. Palacios. Knife ball through to I won Yeet. Unfortunately, can't get it past Philip Schofield. Palacios, though, to Lorenzo. Lorenzo, nice ball back to Butland. Butland holds it up and to Katic. That is the end of the game, though. Huddersfield nil, Hull City 2. They had 14 shots, we had 20. 8 on target, we had 10. 11 fouls to our 4. 2 yellow cards to our 1. And it was 50-50 on the possession. Their best player was Fiend with a 6.9 and a 69. Passes complete. I want to say percentage for some strange reason there. Selick was our best performer. 100% tackle, 1 ratio for the entire game. 7.7 .7 rating as a result. Struggling to perform, however, was Musa with a 6.4. No reason for it. And Sobby with 6.4 and also no reason for it. So they had a couple of players in the milestones making their 50th career appearances. And the player of the match goes to Selick with his 7.7 .7 rating. So let's head to the dressing room. Carlos Finch, tell the boys that they played well. Sorry, very well. So, assertively, well done lads, good win for us. We shall take that victory. It does put us in good stead. We are now up to ninth place, which isn't too bad considering the start we had.
currently three and three. So victories over Huddersfield, Everton and West Brom, losing to Tottenham and Manchester United and Bournemouth. Now, the Bournemouth one, it's away from home, but still, we don't really want to be losing to the likes of Bournemouth. Tottenham and Manchester United, I think we can take those losses on the chin. So, really, we're probably around this sort of 12th to 14th place when you take into account Tottenham, West Ham, Aston Villa and Birmingham all have games in hand. So, actually, no, we'll probably slip two spots. We'll go to about 11th after they've played their games because I would assume Tottenham and West Ham or at least two of those three just below us are going to hop above us. So, for the next episode, like I said, I think we're most likely going to come back for... Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll go that way around. So, we'll do Copenhagen and Norwich. I might even do it as... No. <laughs> no, I really don't want to do Arsenal away on the next video. Because we all know how Arsenal away is probably going to turn out. So, Copenhagen and Norwich will be the next episode, unless the fixtures change around. But I thank you all for watching today's episode. I hope your week so far has been good, and I hope you all have a lovely weekend ahead of you. Goodbye.